Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Apurva and I'm really happy to see you again. First thing first, if you are new to my channel and listening to me for the first time, please do subscribe to my channel. Let's get these videos out to a broader public. I just want everyone to know that how easy it is to achieve something that seems like impossible. So yeah, let's click that subscribe button. So by the way, if you want to follow me on Instagram, do check out my Instagram profile. So I just romanticize my life over there. Let's create videos around me and me. That's no lie. I love it. <laughs> I love that stuff. It's just a creative outlet for me, but I also share my life there. Do check out my Instagram and don't forget to follow me there. Let's come back to the topic of the video, as you might have already read from the title. Today I'm going to talk about the interview process that usually goes in place for any software company. If you want to be a software engineer, back when I was a new grad and I was just starting in my career as well, it was like very confusing because I had a dream, but I just literally didn't know how will I get there. Right? It was like here I was here and I was just clueless where to start with. How is the process going to be? What will be my next step? And what should be the preparation like? And what other things should I be prepared for? Hoping to help a few people out there who are just starting and they are not sure what exactly the process of getting into a company looks like and what all things they have to do before they get the job off. I am mostly going to talk about the processes around fans that you have to go through before getting a job offer. We'll have to give a few rounds of interviews. To prove if you are even worthy to be there. So yeah, it might feel intimidating at first when you hear that okay, there are going to be several rounds of it. Believe me, it's way easier than it sounds. So yeah, first let me talk about the types of interviews that one might face uh, if they are interviewing for a software company. There are three types of interviews. First one is the tech interview where they test your DS and algo skills. The second type is the design interview where they test your design skills. And the third type of interview is basically the HR or behavioral round where they test your people skills. So tech interviews are mostly the interviews that everyone has to give for any engineering position. May it be like software engineer, production engineer, enterprise Engineer, any kind of engineer for a normal engineer it's around three to four rounds of tech interviews. Second round depends on the level you are interviewing for. So if you're a new grad or if you are just someone who is starting in the career, it might not be a design round because junior levels don't require design knowledge and design knowledge is something that you acquire with time while you work and get more experience in your career. So the question will be like, how would you design Instagram if you had to design it from scratch? Or how would you design your own WhatsApp service? So the questions are more around designing services and features and most often than not the questions asked in these interviews are very mainstream so mostly you will find the same questions asked at different places, they keep repeating. The third round is behavior round so mostly because big companies care about how the teammates are getting together, understand what kind of employee you are and how well you will gel with the entire team. Mostly every big tech company has like two to three rounds. The first round is a screening round where they have one tech interview you and they usually ask questions around data structure and import to filter out the candidate on that level if they feel that yeah the candidate is matching the bar then they move the candidate forward to the next stage if not then they just reject you right there the candidate who goes to the next stage has to give around two to three coding interviews one behavioral interview and one hr interview so this is like the on-site round where you have to back to back give interviews it can be spread out on two three days as well but usually it is like all in one day some companies there is a manager round as well but not in all so depending on company to company there is a third round so yeah now let's talk about the tech interviews in a little more detail tech interviews are basically held to test the knowledge of a individual around the data structures and algorithms so mostly when you work in a software company you will be spending most of your time coding right hence you need to be good at that because that's what they are going to pay you for right so they gave a lot of emphasis on these tech rounds and that's the reason they have like three to four tech rounds it is very clear to get into a company you have to have the ds and algo knowledge without it you cannot get into a software development company so how do we get that knowledge how do we get good at ds and algo so there are mainly three ways to get the knowledge the first one is competitive programming so as i also talked in my previous video this is the part that i talk by competitive coding i mean that you do questions you solve questions regularly on a daily basis for over two to three years solving questions on these online platforms like Code share for courses, Forge, or any new platform that is there now. 
nowadays and that skill is just like a muscle to build that common coding muscle you have to practice every day you will also learn advanced data structures like secondary tries you actually don't use it ever in software engineering but it is interesting to understand the working of these data structures and how do they uh, use the algorithms second part is actually doing software development and not that much of computer coding so people who are generally interested in software development they start early in their college time they start developing websites apps no doubt that when you start doing software development every day you will definitely get better at it and you will obviously have good coding skills but you might be lacking the problem solving skills when we talk about the tech rounds for software company it means that they will give you some problems that you have to solve in real time in limited amount of time so that is where it gets tricky for software developers but we have lead code or interview with similar platforms to rsq so they usually turn to these platforms the sites actually help you do interview specific preparation for these tech rounds so you have all the questions of a uh, dsn algo that a company might ask you on the other hand competitive coders since they are doing this thing for years already they don't actually require that much help from these uh, sites because they are in the habit of doing this so if i would give a quick analogy around lead coding uh, and competitive programming it will be like giving board exams studying ncert or studying the iit level syllabus so yeah you know the difference now so anyone who wants to start today can actually start today you just need a laptop and an internet connection and that's it and the will power to get started in this career and that you have to get good at this problem solving stuff and then once you are good at it i don't think there's anything that can stop you from clearing the tech rounds so some of you might be thinking that what is for or problem solving with actual software development a lot of my friends and even myself question this this is a question that a lot of people have in their mind so the research shows that there is a direct correlation all of these tech companies do invest a lot in making sure that there is correlation and pagger is so they keep doing the research continuously they are trying to figure out the best system in place for interviewing candidates solving data structure algorithm questions in a limited time frame actually gives the indication of someone being a good employee eventually in the software development career data structure and algorithms are basically simple identifiers it is easier to judge a person's iq and i don't see it changing in time soon there are some companies which are actually interviewing candidates it based on a software development project they ask the candidate to implement something and based on that the date is uh, accepted or rejected so the amount of candidates that apply to these companies and these jobs is like really huge time is actually money and for these companies it's even more true so they don't want to spend days and week reviewing a software development project and no one who has that kind of time in these companies that is not the best optimal approach at the moment so that's the reason that these companies are going with the quickest constant time approach So the best advice that I have for everyone out there is that do whatever you feel excited about. Both types of people are really, really successful in their career, so that doesn't really matter. I personally took computer programming plus a little bit of software development, but I would say that yeah, as long as you are able to ace the game of problem solving in the limited time and ace those interviews, uh, I don't see there is right or wrong approach. So just pick the best one you like, and just keep in mind that you will have to do problem solving. at some point to be able to clear these interviews the last topic that i would like to discuss today is why the system of interviewing today is a little bit flawed it is imperfect at the moment and these software development companies are also aware of the problem it seems like for someone who cleared all their rounds smoothly and perfectly it seems that it me sign of intelligence the reality is that it's very very hard to get through all these interview rounds in one go because luck has a really really big role to play in this whole process cuz come on you can have a bad day right? so you can be a good candidate you can be a really amazing software engineer but your day might be bad you mess up your interviews right maybe your interviewer was strict or maybe your interviewer was not in a very good mood and was not able to collect all the signals sometimes the solution doesn't kick in like sometimes interviewers really have high expectations from their interviewees some people are actually good at problem solving but they get this fear of interview the nervousness on the interview that they mess up right so they need more practice to get good at their interview skills so they obviously companies try to be as unbiased as possible as fair as possible but there are these caveats there are these small tiny places where life 
happens and it's just out of our hands. There can be a thousand reasons just for you to be rejected, but not that you are not good enough. So if you're not able to clear a software engineering interview does not mean that you are not capable of being there or you're not worthy. You are worthy. You deserve that job. You deserve that position that you are interviewing for. All it means is that you have to try again, that you have to not give up, that you have to keep running after your dreams, keep chasing those dreams that you have seen for yourself. You don't have to take anything away from that rejection email from the company, but that you have to try again. That's all. Because software engineering is basically learning to use Stack Overflow and it's pretty damn easy uh, in my opinion. Companies do not ban a candidate from applying again and again if they are getting rejected. They allow you to appear for their interviews again after some cool down period. So companies do understand the flaw with their system. So the reason that these companies are not ready to give the benefit of the doubt to those candidates that miss just by a little is that these companies don't want false positives. So that's the reason they prefer hiring a candidate in a period of one to two years by investing their time on it and interviewing them again and again and getting that perfect interview acceptance rather than hiring someone who was not actually that good in the first place. So don't be afraid to fail at an interview or get a rejection from the company that you want to be placed at. Life is about failures, right? You don't get success at the first go. Sometimes you do, sometimes you're lucky. But from my experience and from the life I have lived so far and the examples around me and the legends who have lived, failures are inevitable failures are part of our life. That's just a lame thing that is stopping you from living the life that you want. Don't be afraid. So just go out and fail and fail fast so that you can reach to the successful one quickly. These failures are actually the stepping stones to that point. So yeah, just keep giving interviews. Don't stop. Keep giving interviews till the day you succeed. So it's just a matter of time that you will get where you want to be. You have to see a few failures before getting your final taste of success. That is, that is inevitable. So yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope this video is helpful for a few people, but I hope a lot of people out there. And just share the video with your friends and family and anyone who you think needs it. Do subscribe on my channel, please. It's, it's just down below. Please click on that button so that the video reaches to a broader audience to more people and more people could benefit from it. And, I, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.